Hello and welcome to the new video. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Abraxish in the Open Great League. Why do we do this? You're gonna see very very soon. This Pokemon is actually quite interesting and uh, we're going to have a team here that also kind of helps with a lot of the issues that this Pokemon has. We're going to have the lead of the Gust Lord. You can also use Swilus if you don't have a Gust Lord. Swilus is just a little bit of a worse variant of Gust Lord but it's still a Pokemon that you can run instead. But what we are doing here is we're going to try to bait out a potential normal type like a lick user or whatever like a licky tongue with our say swap because our lead is great against it our um, say swap of the ferrelli gather kind of baits out any kind of licky tongue we're going to also try to bait out something like a lantern and so what we're gonna try to do here with this team is try to set up the bruxish to sweep because bruxish actually has a lot of potential confusion allows you to basically farm down anything like an annihilate something like a polyrath quite a lot of different pokemon and just as even here where it's that we're doing resisted damage does quite a lot of damage against them and look what's in the back look at this it's going to be the annihilate from the opponent and so what we can do is we can go for psychic fangs that drop their defense and look at the damage output of confusion after a defense drop against an annihilate it is a madness two more and they can go down we can go for another psychic fangs which is going to force the debuff or it's just going to knock them out because the opponent doesn't even use a shield here so you're gonna see already how this team kind of tries to function. We're going to have an elite here. Basically, you can also exchange something for the Gust Lord. You can also use something that is just great against everything that's really weak for the Braxish or something that's good against something like uh, yeah, Lantern, for example. You kind of would need something for that. Here, we're going to be in a little bit of an awkward spot because we were not really able to swap out against the Dragon there either. But at least we're still going to have some kind of coverage on our Ferreligator against the Lantern, allowing us to get them kind of low. And so we're going to be in a decent spot here. If you're going to have shield advantage, it's going to be even better for the Bruxish because the more shields you have and the more energy you have on this Pokemon, that's like the better it is going to be because you're going to have the debuff of Psychic Fangs and debuff of Psychic Fangs is kind of great. We're going to have a Pokemon that beats the entire team. That's lovely, isn't it? But it doesn't matter because we have Bruxish and Bruxish is doing a ton of damage just with a fast move. Like, I mean, look at this. It's going to be insane damage here coming through and we can still win the CMP tie if it would be a CMP tie, which it is not, but we can still get the debuff on them and this will allow us to just do more damage with our shadow claw and so while this is going to be a tough pokemon to beat it is not impossible as you're gonna see here right now as we can farm them down and win this game Next opponent, Mantan in the lead. This is actually most likely the most awkward one to deal against because like you're going to have, um, deal against, it's not really how I said, right? Uh, to deal with because you're going to have um, Ice Beam on this Pokemon which is going to be super effective against the Elite. And of course the Hydro Cannon is not going to be ideal here either. I think if you sub out a little bit earlier than what I did, you would be in a better spot. But what can I really say for myself here as I can go for a crunch. Crunch is just barely doing a little bit more damage than the Hydro Cannon. But here, as you can see, the opponent's still going to go for a charge move. But you can at least get some extra energy, which might be decent for later on. Especially if they're going to have a Shadow Gliger in the back. So, we can go for a Hydro Cannon. Actually, did I even tell you that I went 5-0 with this team? I'm not too sure anymore. But yeah, I went 5-0 with this team here. And I also put posted this on Twitter as well. And as to people what I was running or which kind of fish and actually the first person directly guessed Bruxish so I guess it's not as much of a steeper pick than I thought but here we're gonna say goodbye to the opponent's Gliger as they're going to be able to um yeah knock them out basically we're gonna see the opponent going into their Annihilate and they're going to use a shield here we're going to have to try to catch a move onto our um Feraligator basically in order to still have a chance of winning I hope that they're gonna try to go for a Shadow Ball here and they do not and so we're sadly going to lose this game it is what it is or is it? Because the opponent just let me farm them down and so we can go for a Psychic Fangs and this is easily enough to knock them out and we can win again. Honestly, I had way more fun than I expected with this Pokemon. I was like thinking, okay, it might be a little trickier to play. But honestly, I feel like this team is just so perfect. Like it's literally perfect towards this Pokemon. Um, here we're going to see a little bit of an awkward matchup for us. It's going to be the Greedon. Greedon is going to have coverage against... Um, either of our Pokemon, depends on what they're running. I guess if they run Trailblaze, they have coverage against both of them. But usually they're running Crunch, I think. Here, I decide to actually go ahead and use a Shield and now swap out because I kind of want to keep the energy on my Gust Lord. Um, we kind of put the opponent now into a range where one Hydro Cannon should knock them out. And so let's see how we can deal with the opponent at this point. It's going to be a little bit of a trickier one, but let's see here. The Hydro Cannon is coming through, going to get the final Shield of them. And so, 
We can use a shield here as well. The opponent goes ahead, goes for a body slam, and they swap out into the lantern here. This is very unfortunate. This is really, really bad for us now. As they called, the Hydro Cannon going to be resisted. I don't even get to another crunch here, which is even worse for me. And so I kind of have to hope that I can somehow farm them down with my Gaslord. This is my only play. I just have to hope, basically, that this is not going to knock us out. This is the only thing that I can hope for. It does knock us out. And so, sadly, this game is over. I can still try my best here with my Bruxish, but I doubt that the Bruxish can 3 versus 1. Yeah, like, there's no way. Like, this is not going to be able to knock them out here, right? I don't think it does, but let's see here. Is it good enough? It is not enough by 1 HP. It doesn't matter. The opponent would have knocked me out no matter what, so, like, it doesn't really matter at all. But we can move on to the next opponent. Next one, we're going to have a Dragonair in the lead. You kind of want to swap out eventually, most likely, but the opponent makes it a little bit easier for us and they swap out themselves, allowing me to go into my Ferreligator. That was a little bit um, of a slow swap by me, so that's something that you could improve as well, as at least we were still able to see Peter in the first move. They're going to go very likely for the Zapkin to try to get the debuff, 66% chance to drop my attack, which is, of course, a little bit of an awkward scenario for us. Basically, steel type Pokemon can be a little bit tricky here. The most common steel type is going to be the Skarmory, which is still kind of fine for you to deal with because you're going to resist the fast move damages ball on your Bruxish. But um, here you're going to see another debuff coming through, which is a little bit annoying. But here you're going to see the trash can of Reggie Steel, which we're at least still going to be able to knock out, but it's still going to be a little bit of a tough matchup for us. We can go for a Crunch, which is kind of going to be the best play I guess that we can do. They're going to use a shield because they expect it to be an ice beam and I can try to go for another charge move which will allow us to get them low, low enough that one dragon claw will be easily enough to knock them out but I don't even have a dragon claw yet so never mind but I can still farm them down so maybe this is going to work for us. Let's see what they're going to have in the back here. Is it a bastion or something? It is not a bastion, it's going to be an azumarill. This is going to be a tough matchup. Let's see how we can still deal with it. I hope for a debuff. I doubt they ever got like a crunch debuff to be fair. I think crunch is by the way better on this Pokemon. I was like a long time basically the brutal swing guy who always ran a brutal swing on this Pokemon. Don't really know why I said it like this, but I was running brutal swing on this Pokemon. I think crunch is better. Crunch is giving you more options, giving you some more win counts with the potential of a debuff. But of course, you can also run psychic fangs on this Pokemon here, which are gonna give you a guaranteed debuff to knock out an Azumarill. Speaking of Azumarill, Azumarill can be a little bit of, of a pain here for this team, but let's see if we can still deal with it. We're going to have here a matchup that I don't really enjoy too much, but we can still see if our Feraligator is going to have a great time here. Feraligator is honestly in the Shadow Variant, like I think the Shadow Variant is kind of important for this. Kinda and kinda not. Um, like, it's definitely going to be a fairly decent matchup for us there. Why I say kinda and kinda not, if you don't have the Shadow variant, you're going to be easier able to survive a play rough from the Azumarill. Well, if you run the Shadow variant like I do here, um, you're going to do more damage with the fast move, which is also kinda nice. Like, there's kinda downsides and uh, yeah, some positive aspects as well for having Shadow and non Shadow. But um, here, I thought of maybe catching a move on my Gaslord, but I hope just as the opponent tries to use a shield here, this would be lovely. They decide to do this. And so at least Gaslord is going to be um, able to align against them here. And I thought maybe I can still just win with the, um, the Braxish here. Yeah, I always want to say that the German name, so I'm like kind of stuttering with this name. The German name is Knurfisch, by the way. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to swap out now here. Hope that they're going to have something in the back that I can deal with. But they decide to stay in here for a little bit. And this kind of gives me hope. If there's something in the back that I can actually do some fairly decent damage against, I might be actually fine. Look at this. It's going to be a Gliger. They decide to go straight for their charge move here. It's going to be just the aerial. It's going to be able to get me very low. But what we can do is we can go ahead and try to go for one awkward tail. This is going to get them low and we can farm them down in time. Allowing us to drop the opponent's defense directly here with the incoming Psychic Fangs. And then let this move go through, which means... We we have to go for two charge moves with our Guzzlord. Can we still reach it in time? That's going to be very, very close for us. We can actually reach this, but is it going to be enough? They're debuffed, but it's double resisted. It is not enough, but we can still farm them down and we can still win this game. Next opponent, Gligan the lead. A little bit of an awkward one, to be fair, but they swap out in the Polyrath, and this would be the perfect timing for us to go into Braxish. But now, look at me. 
I am stuck in a matchup that I don't want to be in, but at least I'm gonna get a shield, which is already great for us. So I quite enjoy at least the shield here because that's gonna allow us to not get to the next charge move, but it's gonna allow us to have at least like a little bit of an advantage here with my Bruxish. This is still gonna get to another charge move here as well. And because we are very squishy on this thing, we kind of forced to use a shield here. We don't get the debuff, which is lovely. As now we see here the Gliger coming back in. We saw the matchup prior already. We can easily kind of win this. We can just farm them down. But I try to catch the move here and it's going to be the Annihilate and I make a ginormous mistake at this point. And this is the mistake here. There is no reason for me to go for Crunch. If I went for Dragon Claw, I would have been able to reach another one at this point, and I would have been able to knock them out of this range. But like this, sadly, the opponent is going to be able to survive this move, and if I just played it a little bit better, I would have been able to win this one, but like this, they actually got the boost here, which doesn't really matter. I would have been easily able to win this one, but sadly, as we saw already before, an Aerial Ace or a Dick, as you're going to see here right now, is going to knock us out, and we can move on to the next opponent. So again, this would be a matchup that I could have won if I just played a little bit better. But again, this team is actually working out way better than expected. I think though, um, from like all the teams that I played so far, I think it's a little bit of a overperformance in terms of the result that I got with this team. I'm not too sure if you play like an entire day with this team. I played like three sets with this team or like two and a half sets, I think, with this team. I think like 13 battles or something. And it went way positive, by the way. Like it was a really fun to play this team. Um, I think I went a total of nine and four with this team, by the way, if you want to know the exact results. Um, but I feel like if you play this team for a little bit of a longer period of time, I think you're most likely not going to have as crazy success with it. But at least like in the kind of like battles that I had here, it was a lot of fun to play. And I kind of always got on top there at the end of the day, so I guess it was kind of still decent to use. Here we're going to be able to just tank some hits with our Gustlord. Gustlord has an insane HP set, by the way. Pretty low defense though, so like it doesn't really look as bulky as it might yeah, be in terms of like the body there. <laughs> but like, yeah, it can still at least tank some hits here, but the defense is pretty bad. The HP is insane, so it's kind of middle in terms of what it can take. But you know what? It doesn't matter because we can win this anyway. Next opponent, second to last battle for today. Hope you enjoyed this video so far. If you did, then feel free to leave a like. And also, shouts to you for still sticking around at this point. You're like one of the few people that still stick towards the end. So, shouts to you. Very much appreciated. As you're gonna see here, the Licky Tongue. A Licky Tongue is kind of what you want to bait out with the Feraligator. So, that's exactly how this team is supposed to work. So, I kind of enjoy this one quite a bit, as Licky Tongue is a big issue for the Bruxish, as Bruxish is going to survive like two licks and then it's gonna be down. So, we can take the Body Stem. They're mostly gonna stick it to another Body Stem here as well, because they played it basically perfect. But let's see what we can still do around this here. We're going to see that we can get some energy and it can swap out immediately. It's going to be the Powder Snow variant of the Alolan Sand Slash. So we can still go for one Aqua Tail. And it's going to connect immediately as the opponent thought maybe he's going to go for the bait. No, I did not. And so, yeah, we're going to still be in a tough spot now. We're going to see the Gliger coming in, and we can try to go for the Psychic Fangs, forcing a shield here for sure. There's no way for them to let this move go through. And so we are still kind of in this game, but it's going to be a tough one. I decided to go for a shield here again, hoping that I still have some play later on, as I tried my best to swap out in time, but I did not even have to swap out in time. And so I can go for the Psychic Fangs, and this is going to be crucial now, because I can swap out. Can I still survive a charge move, though? It's going to be a super effective Ice Punch. Ice Punch is not a strong move, and we barely survive, and we should have not been able to get this move off. Like, this is kind of an inconsistency right now. This time around, it worked in my favor, and again, like, this would be usually a battle that you most likely would lose. Final battle of today, we're going to have a lovely lead here, we're going to have the Sableye. What you kind of have to do though in this kind of scenario is you kind of have to invest in shield because like basically if they stay in here, they decide to just go straight for the return and you don't really want to get hit by this. And so I decided to use a shield and I got to shield up a return. But like this, we at least still get, kind of have like three against two Pokemon, which is kind of wild. They just have an extra shield, which is kind of decent for us as well. And we see what they have in the back. It's going to be a uh, Venusaur and the Bastion, of course. Ferradigator would have been the better Pokemon to have, but I did not really expect that they would have something in the back that would be good for our Bruxish. So if I say stop the Bruxish there, I would have been in a better spot. But we can still try our best because we have our Gaslord. And Gaslord is going to get some nice energy here against the opponent. I can let one move go through. I was hoping that I might be able to get off one crunch against the Bastion and try to debuff their own defense there. 
but otherwise, even though like maybe it doesn't even debuff them, we're gonna always get some kind of damage on them, and I feel like we kind of need the damage, because as you can see, we didn't get the debuff, and so I'm kind of forced to go for the Awkward Tail spam. I have to be really, really careful in terms of how I go for my charge boost, because it has to be perfect in terms of the energy management. As we need three of the Awkward Tails, I think I'm going to be in a very decent spot. I can go for two more fast moves, and this should be perfect in terms of alignment. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. And as you saw the fast move coming through, next one should most likely be a CMP tie. Of course, we would win a CMP tie, and it is, and so we can win the final battle. Honestly, Bruxish was my MVP here. This Pokemon was so much fun to play, and I think it also kind of showcased uh, quite decently on how strong this Pokemon can be. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you want to see some more like spicier Pokemon that you don't see every day, then let me know in the comment section, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.